Hi there guys, in this showcase I'm going to go over some of the features of the Brushify Canyons pack. This pack contains everything you need to build realistic desert canyon scenes in Unreal Engine 4. These huge monument rocks might seem familiar to you, that's because they're made using real world landscape data. The shapes exactly match those of the real rock formations in Monument Valley, Utah. So I've got quite a few features to show you guys. The first feature I'd like to point out is that this pack comes with the Brushify Landscape Auto Material. This auto material updates the terrain texture as you sculpt. The other really notable thing about Brushify packs is that all the assets are modular. All of the assets like rocks and canyons are encapsulated. That means they can be rotated 360 degrees and hold up at any angle. This makes them great for slotting together and making these huge formations. And of course, all the meshes come with LODs built in. As a rule of thumb, all Brushify packs will run on a mainstream gaming machine. The canyons also have these detailed textures, which means you can get really, really close to them. In the example scene, I make heavy usage of the procedural spawners. This allows me to spawn rocks and bushes all over these monuments. This saves a ton of time and effort when populating these huge scenes. Once generated, you can simply jump in and play the game. Of course, if you need more detail in a certain area, you can go in and manually add more rocks and debris. So next, I want to walk you guys through creating a new area in the map. So to begin with, I'm going to start modifying the terrain. I'm going to use the alpha brushes to create some cool shapes. That should hopefully give us a little canyon that we can start working with. Okay, cool. I think that looks pretty nice. This is one of the alpha brushes that already has a canyon built into it. This really shows the power of this technique. Huge expanses of land can be built very quickly. And as you can see, the Brushify Landscape Auto Material has done a pretty decent job of texturizing the terrain itself. So this is okay, but it doesn't look very interesting, and that means it's just it's not that detailed. So what I'm going to start doing is bringing in assets from other areas of the scene and using them to populate the walls of the canyon. And uh, just by you know sort of duplicating these rocks and sort of rotating them around, you can see how I quite quickly can get some really detailed shapes going uh, on the uh, the canyon walls here. There are also some larger canyon pieces that I'll show you guys how to use later on as well. Generally, this is a really good technique, because you can reuse the same mesh and thus textures again and again. This is great for preserving texture memory, especially on consoles and lower end gaming PCs. So long as you take the time to rotate and translate the assets, and make sure they don't look too similar from each other. Merging assets together, rotating them around, or putting additional assets on top can work really well to hide the duplication. So yeah, every time I rotate one of these cliff pieces around and sort of slot it into the terrain, it generally looks just a little bit different from the piece next to it. Especially when I go over this later and add additional geometry on top and around the sides. And I'm already able to run through that little section of the valley. And just quickly, here's another example doing this with some larger canyon pieces and it's just pretty much the same thing just uh, duplicate rotate you know move them around in different ways and uh, you can get some really convincing results with that i have a longer example of building some of the larger canyons coming up soon so our next step is to apply foliage and procedural vegetation to our little scene here so i'm going to start off by generating some bushes on the top of the canyon pieces this is done using the Procedural Foliage Spawner, which is a system in Unreal Engine 4. So this is really simple. Uh, there's already, inside of Brushify, there's already these Procedural Spawners that are ready and, you know, they're set up for you to use. And you can just drag and drop uh, the Bushes Foliage Spawner and then hit Resimulate. And you just use a Procedural Foliage Volume. There's another tutorial on my channel which goes through the complete process of how to use the procedural foliage spawner and operate the different parameters in Unreal Engine, so check that out. And yeah, you can see that it automatically populates the scene uh, with these nice little bushes. Just saves you some time, you know, having to go through and sort of place them all manually. Of course, you know, it really depends on your fidelity, like if you really want uh, a really, really high fidelity scene that, you know, you concentrate on a single shot or a small area, of course you can place these bushes by hand and all the rocks by hand, 
but if you're building something huge like an open world game and you don't necessarily have the the time uh, to spend uh, artistically sculpting every single scene and, and placing assets manually, then these kind of procedural spawners are extremely useful. So yeah. So you can see how relatively quickly in just a few minutes I've now managed to build myself this extra little canyon here in the terrain. And I'm already running around and jumping around and playing around with it. So I hope you guys found this part useful, and if you want any more information, visit brushify.io or contact me directly, or just leave a comment down below. So in this next part, I'm going to be showing a much larger example, these huge canyon walls. Building something as large scale as this can be really intimidating, because it's difficult to know where to start. The great thing is with these sort of modular assets, is bits can be pieced together really easily and simply, to create these kind of canyon shapes. Really the trick is to try to make the assets do most of the hard work for you, and not totally rely on sculpting the terrain, which can take a lot of time and effort. Just like in the previous example, I'm going to start out by laying a basic terrain shape using the alpha brushes. It takes me a bit of time to figure out which brush to use and what size would work well, uh, because I want to kind of extend this canyon ridge outward. The great thing about this method is you can be very creative. So just go into the library of brushes and try and pick one that fits your purpose. Here I'm trying to create a sort of canyon wall for the edge of the playable map. Once you have something on the terrain like this, that looks like it's sort of flowing in the directions that you want, or maybe it's making a, a kind of cool composition, then you can add a little bit of smoothing to make it more playable. Really it's much much better for the player to have smooth terrain directly underneath them, so that they're not going to get caught on any jagged edges or things like that. And if you're worried about the detail, all the detail is being taken care of by the texturizer, so by the landscape auto material itself. So, Detail should mainly be in the texture, rather than in the geometry of the underlying playable terrain. The common misconception that most people have is that the playable terrain itself has to have a lot of detail. The problem with that approach is it will cause lots and lots of problems when players run over the terrain, and even worse when players uh, drive vehicles or you know bikes or cars, anything like that, over the tops of the terrain and the surface isn't directly smooth. The other huge issue with that approach is that the landscape itself doesn't have that much detail, so there actually aren't that many polygons that are available for the landscape to use to create detail. That's why it's much much better and more efficient uh, to do that through texture. There are also other techniques like parallax occlusion mapping and tessellation that are used to get more detail in the terrain, however those can be quite expensive. So instead of adding parallax occlusion mapping or tessellation to the entire landscape, which would add more shader instructions, it's better to either avoid using those features entirely, or use them only in specific areas with something like decals or road splines. I have a new pack that's coming out relatively soon, called the Natural Roads Pack. In the showcase video for that pack, I'm going to be talking about how you can achieve parallax occlusion mapping using decals and splines. Parallax occlusion mapping is a much cheaper effect than tessellation, and it's great for getting detail into those scenes that really need it. Of course, it's fine to cover the terrain with some detailed areas, uh, but those detailed areas can usually be handled by geometry. So in this case, you can see me bringing in all of these large assets uh, to kind of cover the, the, the sides and slopes of that uh, erosion piece, and uh, you know give it that extra detail. In this situation, my canyons are actually built so that they have a detailed texture, which means I can get very, very close to them. And really, this is all about how you place these canyon pieces and how they sort of smoothly uh, form part of the terrain. And the idea is to try to get rid of any seams and noticeable edges here. But at the beginning, I like to keep it very rough and just uh, kind of block out an outline of the sort of shapes that I, that I want to try and achieve. 
The real key to building levels like this is to have a lot of patience and spend the time to slowly and gradually refine certain areas. You'll block something out initially and then you'll find maybe it doesn't work and you'll just have to go into that area and, and just rework it and uh, move things around until you can get it looking good. You know, nothing's going to be perfect straight away, so don't worry about redoing work or about, you know, playing or experimenting to try and find out what works best. You know, in this case, I have some assets that, you know, they fit together pretty well. So I've generally have an idea of, you know, how how I can build these sort of scenes with these assets very quickly. But of course, that did take some time to, you know, to figure out what are the best ways to place these things and, and uh, what sort of rules should be followed. Uh, in order to get some some sort of natural results. Of course, it also matters exactly, you know, the assets that you actually have and at your disposal and, and what you're using, and to make sure that, you know, those assets are um, are going to hold up from different angles and, and can be used in different ways. My usual advice for anyone starting out modeling anything or creating assets themselves is just stick to nature. Try and replicate nature, try and use reference, and uh, it, as, if, if you can even replicate something small from nature, uh, then uh, you're on the right path. So I'm almost done with blocking out the canyon shapes now, and uh, you can see I've been using these sort of bigger pieces here uh, to sort of make the, the kind of central part of it, and then I've been using these sort of extra, I guess they're kind of... Um, spires sections that kind of form the ends or the sort of tendrils of the of the canyon and yeah it's really just a case of like trying to uh move them rotate them scale them you know in ways to make them look slightly different that's the other thing is don't be afraid to actually scale the assets uh in different ways you know if you if you have something that looks really cool maybe just scale it down scale it up or you know you even non-uniformly you can scale it so that it's, uh, you know, stretched upward or stretched to the side. And I think that's also a really powerful way to make assets that use the same textures, the same meshes, uh, you know, to take those and make them uh, look completely different and use them in different ways. So here you can see I actually just stretched that one upward a little bit. The other thing that's really powerful about these assets um, and the way that they're, they're sort of modular is that they actually come with this sort of thrill uh, this base um, uh, at the bottom of them. So there's actually all of this kind of scree build up all the way up to the monument. And I, you know, usually when you find these kind of models, you can see you don't actually get this kind of scree build up around them. But that's actually super useful for uh, for actually embedding these assets into the terrain. So you see, if I move that one up, and then I just kind of scale it down, you can see how that makes this this kind of base uh, softly, you know. Um, smoothly blends into the terrain um, in a much better way than a kind of just like you know a rock just poking straight out of the terrain so here you can see I'm just kind of adjusting all the heights of these canyon pieces uh, so they all use a bit of that sort of scree slope um, and uh, and that that really helps with the look I think and you know there might be ways that you guys can figure out uh, of using these assets that you know I haven't even thought of you know, I mean, there's absolutely no reason why this needs to be uh, a desert in Utah. Like, you could use these pieces for an alien planet, uh, you know, some kind of, like, insane... You know, it could be anything. It really could be anything. It's it's your creative um, idea of, of where you want it to be. It doesn't have to be um, uh, just this, you know, same location. It's all really down to how you how you use it, and of course, you know, because it's Unreal Engine, you can go into the textures and you can change the, the textures and materials, and you can recolor them and saturate them and desaturate them and give them a different hue and um, you know do all kinds of stuff like that in the shaders and the the textures themselves uh, to get completely different results. Here, I'm just blending in the uh, the bases of the monuments uh, so that they blend a little better. And yeah, these usually get covered up by some sort of procedural rocks as well, so usually they end up not being so obvious. What you really want to try and avoid is just any kind of straight lines that are really going to give it away.
There are some advanced features that you can use, uh, that you can turn on in Unreal Engine that uh, basically fade away uh, geometry directly into the terrain. But to be honest, I think rather than relying on a feature, it's much better to learn how to do it the old school way first, uh, and then you know gradually move from there. Because it is possible to you know to hide these kind of texture seams or object seams in the landscape uh, the manual way, and um, and that's usually a much better thing to do than than relying on some sort of heavy uh, in you know high intensity feature that's it's gonna you know it's gonna be very costly on performance. So really, really trying to match texture, colors, and uh, using the lighting, using additional props and geometry, um, scattering things like rocks, foliage, all of that can be really, really good at hiding these kind of seams. And you know, it's it's the situation that if you if you're playing an MMO game, I mean, it's going to be there are going to be seams at some point. It's just whether or not uh, those seams are very, very obvious to the player. Uh, or if they're in, you know, ob obvious kind of ugly locations. So, yeah, really, it's uh, it's a really good thing if you can figure out how to how to minimize seams and how to work around those. So I think this canyon range is off to a good start. Of course, there are different things that I want to do too. So I think this canyon range is off to a good start. Of course, there's a lot of work that I can still do to this, but very quickly, I'm just going to take some shortcuts and procedurally generate some extra detail. So once again, as I showed you guys earlier, I'm just going to simulate the bushes here and the rocks. And you can see that this is going to add bushes and rocks all over the tops and uh, all over the canyons. So this is again using the procedural foliage volume. Uh, you can actually find that in the modes panel if you just type in procedural foliage. And uh, there's a setting that you need to enable in the editor settings, uh, but I have a video on that uh, in my channel. If you just search my channel for procedural, uh, you'll be able to find that. And yeah, this really just scatters rocks and bushes all over the place. Uh, you will need to go in and do some sort of manual cleanup work uh, to make some really, you know, nice looking areas. Uh, but for as a basis, it's usually pretty good. I usually don't like how it's putting uh, rocks all over the tops of the monument, so usually have to go in with a brush and sort of clean up that stuff. So I had some problems getting up there. <laughs> So yeah, here I've got some rocks that kind of, they don't look very natural on the tops of these ridges and stuff. So I'm just going to select the, uh, just kind of clean up those areas by uh, using the brush tool. And if you hold down shift, uh, then you can, you know, delete uh, foliage, place foliage objects. So shift and click removes. So anything that looks a bit weird or out of place, I'm just going to go through and, re and remove. So in general, this technique works really well for giving you a sort of solid basis. Uh, and then, you know, it's somewhere that you can work from and, and move things around and, and reposition objects, you know, if anything doesn't work. All really depends, you know, how much time you have per area, um, whether or not you want to, uh, you know, work on areas manually. So this is a very fast technique uh, to build levels and open world games in Unreal Engine 4. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, visit brushify.io for more information. If you have any questions, just send me an email or leave a comment below. Cheers, guys.